How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you guys? I'm also doing good. Okay. Um, tell me, tell me something brief about yourself. Uh, of course, my name is Alaji Isainus. About as we all growing up playing football, um, we can kind of have nicknames. Yeah. So our, our nickname is Alasa Isalasa. So it's more popular. But then my actual name is Alaji Isa Inusa. The, the, oh, the so Alaji is, is actually a title that you've been to yeah, Hajj. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you've been, you know, titled to yeah. be called Al Hajj. My name is, is actually Isa Inusa. So I was actually, people didn't even know, I was actually born and raised right here at Sabun Zungo. Oh, really? Yes, I was actually born and raised right here at Sabun Zungo, where I was very proud of, you know, a son of a trotro driver which I'm very, very proud of my father. That introduction has to be open first. Yeah. So growing up as a young kid, playing Colts, I started from Padua, okay. right, here, right here at Bubuash. So from Padua in the early, basically mid eight, uh, 70s. So that was years before soccer missionaries was even brought into being. Oh, okay. So I was a soccer football player and I played for the then Padua. And then I made my way to Kinarisin, then to Assad Babies, and then finally back to Great Corinthians, which were actually right around here, Salvation, oh, okay. Okay. Salvation area. So basically that's how my football career started as a coach player. Okay. And um, um, you didn't get the opportunity to play professional football? Yes, sir. Um, from then, from there on, you know, as a, all of us growing up together with, you know, young players like, you know, the names of Maestro Abedi Ayu Pele. Yeah. We all had the opportunity to go to Achimota Green Hill, actually. Oh, okay. So I stayed there briefly for about six months. You know, when we were all sent there, you know, through a scholarship oh, okay. with, I think it was Abedi Pele. I have an older brother who was a goalkeeper and then Abu Moru, oh, late okay. Abu, Abu Moru, who, who has passed me. He's so rest in peace. And then we have Sarkodie, who has also played for Accra Great Olympics. Oh, okay. And then one defender, very, very humble defender, I call him Popodi which we all call him Popodi. Now I think he resides around the Dakuma area. Oh, okay. So we see each other once in a while. And so, and then, you know, now we all friends that, um, I call him uh, Buddy. Yeah. That's a, uh, so, you know, that's how we all grew up from coast and then playing through. And then I was in school one day when we had to play, I think, um, one of the, teams, I was around Carnation playing, I mean, that was commercial, that's yeah. where, where I went to school. Even though I've gone through uh, school here, Beneza, and then while I was at Carnation, I had the call with the vehicle that, Nana, I have gone through my third division those times. Oh, okay. Before Nana, late Nana Yanzu Aka Blemeza called on me, and uh, I, was, I was in school, in my school uniform when um, actually they pulled me to second D, where I joined the second D 11 wise. Oh, okay. So I played Akarakachi those time, and then briefly, there come a time when after a year or so, a year and a half, and Blemeza decided he wants to quit and get out of the system from yeah. second D 11. So those players that he came with decided, you know what? I brought you guys, you gotta go back to Accra with me alongside. He was very close to me at the time. Oh, okay. I'm very, 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 very close to late uh, Blemeza, okay. uh, who within, within that period of time has taught me a lot, including business. So I was very close to him, you know, so he so rest in peace. And uh, from that time on, I moved my, I moved when, he, when I came back to Accra, then I have no other choice but to find a club. So, you know, we have friends because we all mingle. It was one day I was, just I was walking from, was jogging actually from Kanishi and there. Um, 
former Accra House of Folk player, Jonathan Kwadadi. Okay. Yeah, spotted me and said, hey, Isa, I heard your stories from Second D. Um, Blemiza has retired, resigned from Second D. Living Wise, so you have to uh, find a club. I said, yeah, so I'm here. So he just said, look, man, we are, all of us from Accra House of Folk are now moving to uh, other clubs. So would you please join us to play for Accra Stanford? I said, oh, look, man, I have no issues. I just want to play football. Yeah. yeah. So I joined them. I came to Accra Stanford and, you know, from that time on, I, while I was at the stadium, there come Standard Chartered Bank with their vehicle waiting for me while I finished registering for Accra Stanford. Don't forget those times. It was all banks. Yeah. So I have to play also in the all banks league. So that's when I came in to play in the all banks league. And I, I have my coach at the time was... Uh, Abeka Ankara, who we all call White Wari, oh, former okay. Accra House of Folk also, yeah. and a national team player. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's how everything started. So I played for Accra Stamfas, you know, then I stayed with the banks and played in the All Banks League for pretty much about five, four, I mean five, six years before finding my other excitement place in the States. When uh, I called for a leave. I was granted leave for three months. I made my way to the United States and that's how everything just went on. I was actually, people didn't realize that the person that they see today is actually um, so humble because I was actually once on the streets of New York living off garbage containers. I eat from garbage containers that we all see. We put bola in the, you know, you pick up food, people left over, just drop it in, I pick it up and eat it because I have no other choice because I was on the streets, you know, and I've, I've been on the street for about nine days with no food, no nothing, not even a shower. So I have to endure this. So one time I think I was um, just trying to survive when I saw a club training, you know, so, you know, with a fenced, covered mini stadium and being a football player, you see something that you yeah, you know. You'll be interested. You'll be interested. So I went behind the pole and they play the ball, go over the over the pole. I, I pick up the pole, the ball, and uh, just juggle along, you know, with the ball. And and then by the time you know it, the coach was watching me. He was paying attention. I guess they kept playing more and more balls behind the pole. And while you know, I pick up a ball and I start juggling with it. And then you know, he called me if we can. He said, hey, you from, where are you from? And I said, I'm from, I'm from Ghana, actually. So, wow. Then quickly said, you, you know, Abedi Pele? I said, oh, wow, great. One of the At what age was this? I mean, I would say pretty much in the early late to late 20s. Okay. She was late 20s, basically okay. about 26, 27 years old at the time when, you know, our career is, will have still been in the, yeah. you know, basically, yeah. but unfortunately, I decided to pave my way to the United States. I actually had the opportunity to join the Black Stars at the time when Koblen Yebu, I, I remember, you know, after I've joined Kosovo. And play, I played for Kosovo in the Super oh, League okay. in New York. I played for Kosovo. And then they kept calling me to join the national team. I kept refusing because at the time I wanted to play for United States and play in the World Cup of 1994. So I wanted to play 94 World Cup for United States. Oh, okay. and, then, and then boom, you know, during one of our games, I got injured and, you know, a knee injury and that really sidelined me uh, for, for a while and uh, I couldn't survive. But I always uh, have that passion for football. So, you know, once in a while I get myself involved. involved. And then we were, I think we play also Lions. I remember I played Lions with late Alaji Ibrahim Slaitete oh, okay. in New Jersey, even though we know each other from Ghana, but oh, okay. yet we play the Lions together. I play Lions with late Alaji Ibrahim Slaitete. Okay. May he so also rest in peace. He's a, such a great, great human being. Was that how you met him? Oh, no. We actually know each other from Ghana before we went to the state. So when he got to know I was in the country, that was when he pulled me in to come and join his forces. In, in Jersey to play for the Lions. So I play Lions with Sly for, for, for a brief 
Okay, so but at, at what point did the decision to shut up Liberty Professionals start? Oh, to start out the Liberty Professionals, I think it was myself and Sly, late Sly Tete um, decided to come down to Ghana and we decided to come to Ghana for a, for a visit, just vacationing. That was around 1990, I believe it was 1992 there. Yes, it was around 1992. So we came down and we stayed, we overstayed actually about a year and, and change, a year and a half. And Sly decided he's not going back. I said, Sly, look, we have to go back. You know, it's time to go back. Sly said, no, look, man, I just want to, uh, you know, form a club. So by him saying that, kept trying to convince him. His mom, we're very close oh, okay. with both, both of our parents. Oh, okay. My parents and his parents, because of just the two of us, yeah. you know, bring those families became together. More of a, uh, uh, more of a family, yeah. you know. So we did that and uh, Sly decided, okay, he's staying, you can go. Because me and him, we have that kind of close relationship. Actually, we can share to, the, to that extreme of underways. We, can, we share the same underways together. Wow. We can share the same thing. We do everything together. We sleep in the same bed, you know. So when he decided he wanted to join, you know, form a club, you know, I said, cool. So I went back to the States. And he was here. People think late Sly Tete got everything on the silver platter. No. Sly and myself, while we were in Ghana, we used to drive our own taxi and we have, you know, a baseball hat covered our faces and we work in Akratema. We pick up passengers. We did that. Sly, nobody knew that because we didn't have anything. We were broke, but we know we could survive with our car that we have. At the time, I have a Mitsubishi Gallant. So we were doing it just to, just to survive. And slowly but surely, Sly kept emphasizing that he has to get this team going. So when I went back, one day I was there, he gave me a call that, yo, we can, uh, we can find a club. If you have some change that you can send, you know what the situation is here in Ghana. So if you can send some change. I said, Sly, are you sure you can do this? Sly said, look, man, we can do it. So I said, okay, no problem. Well, how much? It was not really a big money, but I could, I could remember it was a couple of thousand dollars that he said I should send, he can buy the, he can purchase the club. So he did that. I sent him the money. And the next thing, it was the next day or so, two days later, he, confirmed, he, he called me to confirm that he has got in the club. And that was at the time, I believe it was Ochimai. It was Ochimai, it was not Liberty. So we wanted to, so when he got the club, he was now doing his own little movement. So okay. every, every week I have to make sure they survive, uh, making sure that he got money in his pocket. So you were, you were more of the investor of... Uh, well, I can't, I can't say that because I didn't sign any contract with late Alaji Ibrahim Slaytete. He was, we are not friends. We are like brothers. Brothers, yeah. We are beyond friends. Okay, and to this day, I'm very close with his family, Kate's more so, and uh, I run the whole, I, I run the whole, um, uh, his estates, and until I, you know, decided to make sure they have it, they all, they all grown now. When, when he left me, it was those two, Na and Ni were at Lego. Okay. So I have to make sure I run back and forth and make sure I take care of those kids and until they, they get on their feet, to be able to get their stuff out and everything that took place at the court. I was the one that audited the whole team when he, after meaning his passing. So back to the club. So we wanted, now I came down to Ghana after he had bought, purchased the... Uh, Liberty. Not Liberty, it was Ochima. It was, Ochima. Ochima. Yeah. It was not Liberty at the time. So I came down and we decided what, cl what name we should name the... The club. The club. And we started debating on, he wanted us to use Sasly, meaning Isa Sly uh, okay. FC. And I said, Sly, no, that don't make no sense. Why do you have to use our names? Because both me and Sly, 
we are not social media people. We don't, li we don't really yeah, like to. Yeah, in those days, there was no social yeah, media. Yeah, well, the social media, you can still, you know, pinch here and yeah. there. And, but, but both myself and him, we're not people that want to come in front of the cameras and speak and talk to media. Till this day, I don't even communicate. I don't talk to media. It's not for nothing. It's just that kind of shy kind of a person that's growing up. So we decided debating what name we should, we should put for Liberty. And I said, no, you know what it's like? Remember where you used to work at in New York? He was a travel and tour. It was the name of his, his office is Liberty Travel and Tour. So I said, let's use Liberty FC. I think it will make a lot of sense. So he said, no, no, Sly said, no, 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 no. It should be our name. We should leave a legacy behind. I said, no, Sly, let's use Liberty. Then I said, okay, at the time it was right here, right around this corner, circular area where my mom and dad was living at the time. So I said, let's go, let's go inside and see and talk to my mother. So both, both me and Sly walked to the room and asked my mom, and my mom said, well, all along you've been going to Chief Imam, right? Why don't you go to the old man and ask him what name you should use? So we said, oh my God, my mother again. She said, go to, go to, go to the old man. And who that old man was? The great and humble National Chief Imam of Ghana. So we went to him. And then we came across this, because he has been going back and forth with us. Yeah, yeah. So we decided to go and see him and talk to him about the situation. And immediately we raised the issue of, he said, you guys, remember? I'll tell you something. And he gave us a brief story of how we should go about everything. So he said, remember, we have to go back to Kofredia. There was one humble, humble man there. He's late today as we speak. May his humble soul rest in peace. His name is Malam Amma at Kofredua. He's a great, great man. He introduced us more into the football and told us, myself and Sly, he said to raise our hands we raise our hands and he prayed for us and he said, your team will have to be the name that you want. Whatever you agree on and Chief Imam said, that's what you do. He said, it's going to be one of the best maybe ever. We said, what? Sly, I look at Sly, Sly look at me, we didn't argue. We said, okay. And so the, the old man at Kofedwa, great Mala Amma, he's deceased. So much respect. He said, go back to Chief Imam. So we came back to Chief Imam on that same day. Not any other day, on the same day. So we came back to Chief Imam and the rest is history. And, the, and then the Chief Imam said, okay, the name should be Liberty Professionals. And there we came about Liberty Professionals. So slide two it on. At, at what point did uh, Felix Anson come into the picture? Because Fem most many stories... I've been told about Felix Anton also being a, uh, one of the founding fathers of the club. I don't want to come into the picture. <laughs> Felix Anson, we call him Dada Anson. Yes. Dada Anson came into this picture. I remember one day I was home, Sly called me, he wanted some money, some cash, about 100 million. That was old currency. Yeah, those days. Yeah, that was those days. So today we say 10,000 Ghana cities. Sly was looking for an office. Nowhere to find an office. He found his friend. That's Phyllis Anson. So Phyllis Anson has his older brother that has stores alongside Dansoman Runabout, along that road. So Phyllis Anson took Sly there. He found him a store. Right, direct, basically directly side opposite that feeling around at Dansoma Runabout. So he was able to get that place for him. And the rest, he gave Sly, that time, 100 million Ghana cities to Sly. 
you know, just like for yeah. assistance. So it was that time. That time, the club was already liberty. People were contemplating issues with that answer. If you have to talk about owners of liberty, that answer should be the fifth owner. The first owner should be the great national chief imam, Mala Amma, late al Haji Ibrahim Slaitete, and myself sitting here. I never mentioned this to anyone. I never say it. But these four people are the real owners of Liberty Professionals. You can add Anson. I wish one day Anson would come to me, approach me and say, this is the signed contract he has with Sly. Because every document that Sly has, I have, I have copies of it. And just recently, I actually gave back all Sly's documents to his family. It's on, it's on my table right now. I can easily show them to you in front of their lawyer. So do, you, do you have interest in liberty profession? I really don't have no interest. I really don't have interest. I have no meaning to have interest. My interest in liberty is to make sure that Dada, Dada Anson, we call him Dada Anson, meaning Felix Anson, yeah. do, will have to only do one thing for me. Just do his own due diligence to take care of Sly's family. Don't leave them as if they have nothing in liberty. And that's where I have issues with uh, that answer. If you can call that answer right now and speak to me and let, let me ask him questions or he can ask me questions, I'll be more, more than glad to, have, to give him a listening ear so and vice versa. Have you been following Liberty Professionals? Well, ha have I been... Following the club? Well, I've been following the club. I know where the club is right now. No, as to... As to the motion, they, they yeah, so let, Okay, so let me put it in, in context. Right. Whether you've been one person who has been key, uh, key mm -hmm. or been heavily involved in the management of Liberty Professional. Since you're one of the founding founders, mm -hmm. yes. you, know, you know the genesis of this club. Right. You definitely should have an interest in how the club first because your brother is no longer alive right. and his legacy needs to be protected. So as someone who's, in fact, whose money brought Liberty to life, you should be interested in what happens to the club. Are you part of the management of Liberty Professionals? And do you have interest in managing Liberty Professionals? Well, thank you for this. Let me just seize this opportunity to also say, um, I, had a, I had actually a call from the family's lawyer. So about a week or so ago, I was able to meet the, the family lawyer and sat with him and the discussions has really, it will have to be on a different day or time that we will come back again and then you play the tape and you say, oh wow, I said I have visited the, the lawyer and they have come out with the same issue that you are just, you know, making mention of. Um, I will be waiting for them to have a signed seal letter for me, and then I can take matters from there on into my own hands, as either uh, that answer should be called the sole owner of the club and not late Al Haj Ibrahim Sly Tete or myself. Have you, have you spoken to that answer? Well, I've called that answer to this same place um, basically a few years ago to tell him just a few years, just about, maybe I'll say about seven years ago, to say when Sly was alive, he purchased a property at Dodua, about 250 plots. So his name was also added into that uh, okay. document. So I said, look, I don't have the luxury to go around doing that. So you can come around and take the, the documents and go take care of this place. So he did that. But guess what Anson did? After giving him those copies of those documents to go, you know, so because it's going to be encroaching, people will encroach the yeah. place. So the place was meant for a stadium for liberty professionals at Dodua. But since I did that, 
Guess what, Anson? Anson never even called me for once after he has come to me and pick up the document. He never called me for once to say, oh, Allah, Jesus, this is, this is, in the, and then I've, I, was, I was able to. But through friends, he said he has retrieved 75 of those uh, properties. So basically, less than 50% in ratio, if you will. So, but he has not come to me directly like I have done to him to even tell me something. So even out of the 50%, let's just say approximately 50%, how much percentage are you giving to the family? Not me, I don't need anything, I'm blessed. But have you called him since he left here? Well, since he left here, we yes. have spoken, but we, I, I will never say or raise anything in regards to that, as I expect him to do his due diligence and respect himself to, to even speak to me and tell me stories of that nature. But it's also important that since you gave him the document, you yes. follow up to tell, okay, I gave you a document. Right. I wanted you to go and check a certain place. Yeah. Did you check the place? Have you seen the property? Well, I've seen the property. I was there. No, so I'm, I'm saying, that, I'm the saying that these are the questions you should be asking that are right. answered. Since he came to pick the document right. from you, right. and it is in your interest that the property of Alaji Salateta is protected, you gave the document out to someone you feel was also close to Sly okay. and can um, manage the properties of Sly in mm -hmm. his absence. So if you gave the documents to him and he went away, you should have interest in following up to asking, oh, I gave you document A, B, C. Have you seen the place? Have you checked the place? Did you have that conversation with no, you? No, we did not. Why did you not do that? Um, because, look, I'm the one that gave them, gave those documents to you. At the time, Chief Imam had handed over everything to me to support the family and bring everything. So I've called in um, the audit service people to audit everything for me. So I kept them in the hotel and they were doing the auditing. You understand? So I give him the benefit of the doubts. Like somebody looking, you know, a little decent. So you expect him to do, you know, his fair deal. But uh, yes, right now we are heading towards legal action. On a hindsight. So I cannot, on the, on, so I'm not, I can't speculate. On a hindsight, right about, do you yes. think you should have called him? So for instance. I think so. I think I should have. Yeah. I should have called him and, and asked him. But this time around, yes, I will I I I surely do that with documentations. Say, look, now I'm serving you. And we have to face each, each other. You have no choice. Are you fighting him for, for the oh, property no. of liberty? Oh, no, no, I'm not fighting him. I have no interest in liberty. I have no interest. I'm just fighting for... Uh, for Sly Tete's children that he left behind for me. And I have to do my due diligence for them on their behalf. I have no interest in Sly's any property. I don't need it. I don't want it. I've never, ever needed anything from him. I'm blessed. As you can see, I'm blessed myself. Why do I need to challenge somebody else with Liberty you know, Professor is one of the properties of Sly. It's late Sly's property, yes. Yeah. Belongs to him.